Okay, so um, all of you probably see the PowerPoint slide up there on your screen. Um, once again, uh, we will have Greg Tool go through uh, a couple slides here talking about the Schubert and Salzer valves, the uh, angle seat, the sliding gate, uh, talk about a couple applications. And um, when we wrap up today, uh, we will also have a, a short uh, question and answer uh, session as well. And uh, with that, I'll uh, turn it over to Greg and uh, we'll go ahead and proceed. All right, thank you, Jeff. Uh, appreciate you having me here today. And I'll introduce myself very quickly. I am Greg Tool. I'm the regional manager for the upper uh, north central United States, uh, where all the action seems to be happening lately. And uh, I am here uh, um, working with Loy uh, and uh, really appreciate uh, the opportunity. And, and thank you for giving me your time. Uh, I am a Hoosier boy, so I, I graduated from Purdue here. I have a, a degree in electrical engineering from Purdue, and I'm glad to be back uh, in central Indiana. So we're going to talk a little bit today. Um, here's the agenda, for what we're going to go over, do an introduction of the company very quickly. Um, hot and cold, so we're going to be talking about steam and, and chilled water. Uh, I'm going to introduce three of the valves in particular, and also applications. And I'm going to touch on a number of applications. Uh, if you have any questions about those applications, you can see what I can answer. Uh, they're not all my applications, so um, I can also bring in um, some more information and, and post it for you or, or provide it to you at any time. And then we'll have a little dialogue at the end. So first of all, the introduction, I did introduce myself. Usually I'd ask everybody else to introduce themselves. It's a little bit more difficult today, so you just have to listen in who I am and, and we'll move on. Um, Schubert and Salzer. So getting you to know what, what Schubert and Salzer is. We're a, a town uh, uh, located in a, in a town called Ingolstadt in Germany. It's a city of approximately 130,000 people. Uh, it's located in southern Bavaria, uh, right in between Munich and Nuremberg. And if you go farther south, you're in the Alps. So uh, a little bit about the company. Um, the company was founded in 1863. It's been around a long time. It's been transformed through various manufacturing processes, always working with iron and steel and products over the years. And, and we started producing the valves themselves in the 1950s with the angle seat valve, which is one of the uh, valves I'll introduce today. And then finally, in 1991, the company became what it is now uh, in terms of uh, all the financials after a management buyout. So the group looks exactly like it is uh, today since 1991. Um, you can see sort of the front there of the, of the building. One of the nice things about us is that uh, we uh, deliver very quickly, two to three weeks. We have uh, standard shipping charges and palletized freighting. And we get it to your doorstep very quickly. So a lot of times two to three weeks to your doorstep. Um, we also do two-day delivery, and all of that can work, be worked out through Lloyd. And uh, we have some positioners, parts, and other valve assemblies that we stock in, in Concord, uh, North Carolina as well. I'm going to try. We didn't try this out yet. Let's see how a video works. So just a very quick video that shows our factory, um, the office building, and uh, also where we do our training and conferences um, in Ingolstadt. And again, let's see if it comes up here. I'm going to try this. All right, well, if that doesn't work, yeah, we can try that again maybe later. Maybe yeah. we can even pull up YouTube and do it that way. But for now, we'll move on. And so uh, in terms of the United States, we've been here in the United States for 20 years, which is long enough to have a nice footprint, but also um, not long enough that, uh, you know, we're, we've saturated the markets. We're, um, we're still growing very rapidly, and a lot of people are uh, including us. And, and once I think we get a valve in a place, uh, I've noticed that uh, people are looking for we stink. People are looking for other opportunities to use our valves. Um, so that's one of the reasons I came over from Dwyer Instruments just a, a year ago, a little more than a year ago, was for that reason, because uh, a great opportunity here with Schubert and Salzer. And uh, after executing my due diligence, I saw that uh, our valves, once people tried them, they do stick. So high quality valves. Um, we have uh, we're founded in 1999, as I mentioned. We're really celebrating our 20th year this year. And we have uh, a number of uh, distributors and branch offices throughout the United States. So ultimately, it comes down to um, Schubert and Salzer valves and products uh, provide great solutions using innovative German engineering and yet great delivery and service. So you get that ingenuity, you get the quality, but without the typical long deliveries that come with some of the well-engineered products out there. Um, just to give you an idea of some of the references that we have, these are references that are on our website. 
So if you were to go to the Schubert and Salzer website, you would see that these are all the companies that we work with. I think I'll mention, uh, I think Brax Air's on here someplace down here, uh, and also Lindy, um, and a couple of our, a couple of the applications that were shown. There's, there's other ones on here as well, like Chrome's for breweries. Uh, some of our strengths, so lead time and shipping in terms of forecasting in bulk and assembling. So what we do is we don't just get an order or a number of orders and then come up and manufacture things. We have most of our parts uh, ready cast and, and manufactured uh, and ready to go and, and assemble. So we have the parts, uh, they're more or less modular. We have everything assembled when we send it to you, the actuator, the positioner, the valve, and we get it out the door in one or two weeks. Um, again, innovative engineering, simplicity with elegance. Uh, we provide a lot of support, and uh, Jeff here provides a lot of support and his folks at Loy. Um, in Concord, uh, we provide a lot of support in terms of technical support, sizing valves, uh, make sure we find the best solution for you. We have 50 years of cumulative uh, experience selling just Schubert and Salzer, and the technical folks there uh, in Concord also have worked with, uh, you know, uh, worked for companies like Fisher. Uh, and Jordan valves too. We have a valve sizing uh, proprietary software uh, that we work on to make sure that we're giving you the right size valve uh, with the right CV value, equal percentage or linear, and anything else you might need as long as we get some information about some of the specs. And then uh, this is what the valve sizing looks like. We'll send that out, work with Lloyd to get that out and make sure that you guys can see what the, what the valve sizing looks like that we've come up with. Um, sometimes some recommendations about piping too. And then we also do dev config, which is a real-time configuration and setup, allows you to do diagnostics and plug into the positioner and actually see what's going on, what's going on over the last 24 hours specifically, or even farther down, how, how often uh, you know, air is going in and out um, of your uh, actuator and, and whether or not maybe there's an air leak. And then uh, we have a website too uh, that a lot of times I'll walk around, but it's a really good website with data sheets as well as user manuals and references and literature and brochures. And uh, if you need, the, uh, we've got a demo here. Uh, Lloyd does and, and ask for a demo and we can bring one over uh, and you can actually touch it and, and play with it a little bit, the valve. So the sliding gate valve is the first valve I'll talk about. Uh, here you can see this is the sliding gate valve and um, get an idea of what it is. A lot of people who have worked with uh, valves for 20, 30 years in maintenance have not seen a sliding gate valve yet. You might have seen knife gates, which is completely different, just up and down, a solid piece. This is, is different, it's multi-orifice. Uh, so you can see here sort of what it looks like. It's very simple too, that's the nice thing about it. There are no small parts here. You've got a, a disc holder, this disc just slides in the disc holder. And um, I don't know if you can see them well, where I position myself, but basically, this is the part that you take out of the valve. Very simple. Just a, a fixed disc, a moving disc, um, connects the shaft, and uh, this is the disc holder here. So this connects, um, this connects the valve shaft. Here is the, uh, the part that's the moving disc. Here's the fixed disc. These um, little bitty springs here are just to hold the parts together and make it easier for you to put it into the, um, into the body here, the wafer body. Uh, and then there's a face plate as well. Uh, but again, these little springs are necessary. So four or six screws and you're good to go. So it looks something like, like this. Then if, here, I'll go ahead and uh, see, let's see. I'll go ahead and switch over to video. Okay. Thanks, Jeff. Mm -hmm. There you go. Right down the bottom. There. So here is the valve. This is a two inch valve. And I am holding it with one hand. I had to work out a little bit this morning for this, but uh, Andy has a bad neck. Yeah, but the, band, <laughs> but the right, and I'm doing it right. But basically, we're able to see this uh, that I am holding with one hand. And you imagine a globe valve. Uh, if you had a lot of uh, any experience with globe valves, holding a globe valve with one hand would be uh, near impossible. So here's the pieces again that go together. You can see how it fits together. The um, let's see, there we go. So here's the fixed part of the, the disc, and here's the moving part of the disc, and here's where your um, valve shaft would, would uh, go on to, and then here are the, the little springs that aren't really necessary, easily taken apart, and then you can see how this would come out as well. And it goes back in again, right there, so you can see how this just slips out of the 
disc holder will notch here. And you could turn it 180 degrees. We'll talk about that in a second as well. And the nice, uh, the nice thing about the sliding gate is you're seeing Greg take that apart here within seconds. Um, I don't know how many times we have been in applications where a customer might have ordered a normally open or a normally closed valve and get it out in the field and say, oh crap, I should have had, I should have ordered it the other way. With what Greg just did there, you can very quickly open that up and change it from normally open to normally closed in a matter of seconds with uh, with that procedure that Greg just did. So it's very adaptable out in the field if you had to do alterations. Uh, but uh, and I'm sure Greg will probably cover that in a little bit here. I'll go ahead and switch back to the PowerPoint. Okay, thank you. Let me give you this too because I'll sort of show if you take those screws off okay. to show how that cap comes off too, how we know it comes off. All right. So here it is. Thank you, mm -hmm. Jeff. So there's a video here too. We're going to go back and watch this video for sure. It's a really good video. It shows you the sliding gate valve. Uh, but moving on with it, sizes, we go from a half inch to a 10 inch with the sliding gate valves. The one I've got here on the screen has actually got a little manual hand wheel override, which we don't sell very many of those. People don't seem to want them, but I, I put I put the, the valve up here with everything on it, basically. So diaphragm actuator, a position indicator, uh, or positioner, I'm sorry, positioner, and then also with the valve itself and that and that hand wheel. Um, ANSI ratings up to 600, uh, ANSI 600. I'll show some more information about pressures and temperatures. We have a cryogenic version, which goes down to negative 328 degrees Fahrenheit. And you can see up all the way up to 986 degrees Fahrenheit for the fluid temperature. Um, if we, we add some options to get it up that high in terms of temperature. Uh, 50 to 1 and 150 to 1 for rangeability, so excellent accuracy. Uh, so, you know, for those of you that aren't familiar with using the term rangeability, it means if we were going from uh, we're using 50 G GPMs, for example, gallons per minute of a liquid, you could easily control down to 1. 150 to 1 means if you're going from 50 uh, GPMs, you could go to one third of a GPM and be controlling it uh, with great accuracy. Uh, linear equal percentage. Now we have multiple CVs, and just like Jeff mentioned, we can just switch out the and turn it over the um, the disc in order to change it from normally open to normally close. We can also just change the disc uh, to make it a, a different CV to give it a different characteristic or just a different CV, just a different flow. And then the medium: steam, chemical, gases, water, oil, natural gas. Uh, a number of different uh, uh, mediums that we use as well. We have different seats for different compatibility with different chemicals and depending on whether we're using steam or um, a liquid and the industries uh, boiler industry chemical petrochemical tires rubber plastic foods test benches number of test benches that we use for different uh, for aircrafts uh, for hot air uh, also for um, combustion uh, in terms of test benches and uh, beverage food and beverage too and then actuators uh, all of our valves are, are that I'm aware of, at least, are, are uh, basic valve, come in pneumatic, electric, or manual. And finally, communication. Uh, most of our communication is done through that dongle and the dev configuration so that you can do diagnostics and interact. We have other communication as well. So here, just to give you an idea of what we do pressure-wise, go all the way from half inch to 10 inch with this valve. And you can see that we have two versions of it, the GS3, which is this one, the GS4, which is more sturdy. So we have the GS4, we can get up to ANSI 900 all the way through three inches. And with the bigger valves, uh, we can get all the way up to GS4, uh, all the way up to ANSI 600 by using the, uh, the GS4 as well. So what really, um, yeah, so, so let's look at the, the technique involved with the valve first of all. Uh, it has two slotted discs, as we've shown. They move together and they seal against each other. So you have the um, pressure, uh, high to low, the flow going in this direction, pushing the moving disc up against the fixed disc. There's a little bit of an overlap, which I think it shows right here, two millimeter disc overlap right here, and that's what gives you your closure. Now it's metal to metal, so this is not what you call positive shutoff. It's not an on-off valve. This is a control valve, but nevertheless, because of the pressure coming in here, because these things are lapped and they're so smooth and they fit together so well, and it has that over travel, 
because of all of that, it does give you pretty pretty good shutoff. In fact, uh, class four shutoff, uh, about a hundred times greater than class four. And as these things go through time and they lap, it even gets better and better. Uh, so the shutoff approaches class five at some point. Um, um, so I mentioned all this, the, the class four to five shutoff, dissimilar metals, so there's no galling, lapped for eight to 12 hours. So uh, lapping is basically polishing, uh, it eliminates the friction. We'll talk about why eliminating the friction is so important in a moment, but let it you know, be known eight to 12 hours of lapping. And if you actually get these valves in your hand and you can play with this function unit set and these discs, you'll see how smooth they are uh, traveling together. Uh, the valve continues to lap, lap itself laps in service. So basically, these things just love to modulate, and they get better and better as time go on. They start off very well, and they get get better. Um, so um, this was just something very quickly we already talked about. Uh, if you want to change it, you've got that little bit of um, uh, extra, uh, so it's not quite the same on the top and the bottom. That determines whether it's normally open or normally closed. And if you want to switch it. All you have to do then is turn it 180 degrees, take it out, turn it 180 degrees, and this will match up over here. Uh, and there's another one down here, and then you just put it back in and you switch. So one of the great advantages of this thing is how, how much smaller it is than a normal uh, ball valve. So with a normal um, globe valve, uh, you'd have a situation where you have sort of a circuitous route that goes through the valve. Uh, S-curve, people might call it. It's being diverted. Uh, and, and there's a couple of disadvantages with that. Number one, um, the pressure and the force go straight up against the plug. So the force you have to apply to close the valve is equal to the force coming in exactly, uh, or very, very close to that. And then it's also creating sort of a less laminar flow. With our valves, it's broken up. So you've got slots, holes that the, valve, that the, uh, the liquid or the steam or gas is going through. And we're, you can think of a, a what's going on with our valve is it, it's slicing through the flow. So what we have to overcome is just the friction between the two sliding discs, which I already mentioned, we eliminate a lot of that friction by um, lapping it. And then, um, you know, there's, it's pushed up against it with a force. And so you just uh, um, vertically go up and down against the flow at a 90 degree angle, uh, not against the flow, slicing through it. And so basically what it comes down to is that uh, we have to use about 10% of the actuation force that you would uh, in a situation like this with a, a globe valve. And so we're much smaller. Actuators are much smaller, and um, we require a lot less power, a lot less, um, a lot less air, and uh, get the same job done. Yeah, if I could add something there, Greg, uh, there's a lot of applications that uh, that we've been involved with, um, you know, in. Uh, automotive assembly, paint lines, uh, boilers, large boilers, utility boilers, where customers are really wanting to try to figure out a way to get away from pneumatic actuation. And one of the reasons why on a globe valve you have to use those pneumatic actuators is from the fact that Greg just uh, pointed out, which is the, the force or the torque that requires uh, on those globe valves to be able to push that stem against the flow or the pressure, the incoming pressure. Um, whereas if, uh, if you were using the sliding gate, uh, you're able to actually use a much smaller torque electric actuator and get away from all those pneumatic lines that are being run all over the plant. Um, you know, there's a lot of nuisance uh, shutdowns that you can have from uh, bad pilot regulators and dirty air going into the pilot regulators where you have to shut the process down and clean the regulator. So um, if you're able to go to an electric actuator and use a sliding gate on a larger valve versus a pneumatic on a globe valve, uh, that will really, really reduce a lot of headaches that your customer might see. So um, that's just one point I wanted to want to interject there real quick, Greg. Sure. Excellent. Thank you. Absolutely. Just very quickly, the, uh, in terms of the size, you can see the difference here between a regular globe valve and one of our valves that's the same size. Uh, we take up more space. We do use a wafer connection, uh, and customers that use it tend to like it even better than a flange at the end. You can equip it with a flange. We provide a spool piece because we're going to make up some space that we don't need uh, with that spool piece. So very simple. We, we get the dimensions from you, uh, provide the spool piece to make it up, or you can make the spool piece up in your shop yourself. Uh, we've also got shops in the area that'll make spool pieces for us. 
Um, just a little bit, uh, again, to show that difference in size and the weight comparison in particular, um, you can see even at the very lowest, uh, it's more than uh, three times heavier globe valve than one of our valves. So a half inch, 16 pounds for us, 78 pounds for, um, you know, the average globe valve. And then if you go up to, you know, a four inch, it becomes even more drastic, eight times. And usually about a third the size of this year globe valve here. If you can see that in the presentation, I got a little bit in the background and then much smaller valve of ours. So one third the size, you know, one fifth, one eighth, even one fifteenth as you get bigger here in terms of the weight. So you might have to use a crane to, to bring down a valve, uh, a globe valve, whereas with ours, uh, you don't have to do that. You're just going to... Uh, uh, be able to, you know, carry it down a ladder even um, and, and get it out and take it out and, and work with it. So it's, it's very quick, the maintenance in terms of taking out those uh, discs and very quick in terms of just getting it out of the, of the pipe as well. And still, regardless, our uh, cross-section is a little bit better than a globe valve. Uh, here's what a globe valve cross-section looks like. Here's ours. And, and in actuality, the CV values of ours are higher so we can get more flow through ours. 1,055 for a 10 inch versus 730 the CV for a globe valve. Here's a, an example of two globe valves. So here's, we're replacing two globe valves. One has been replaced in this case, and it's a nice picture that shows you the original globe valve and how big it was compared to our sliding gate valve. And then in this one, we replaced that other one as well. So both of them have been replaced. They used to have, you know, have to have something that actually held up the valves. They were so big uh, where ours didn't, didn't need that. Um, and in addition to that, uh, it's just, yeah, just, oh, uh, because of the, the, the size and the weight of it too, we can hang ours at different angles. So for most globe valves, you're definitely going to have to have it be vertical because you're going to bend the stem otherwise due to the weight. With ours, you can hang it, you know, 90 degrees all the way upside down. We've configured it for that, for, for you that way, calibrate it that way uh, at the factory, but you can hang it in uh, other orientations. Cavitation, this is very interesting. So. What happens with cavitation is very rapidly, you probably know about cavitation, but basically you have a liquid, it's being compressed with pressure, so it's staying in a liquid form. Once it passes through a valve, there's going to be a pressure drop. When that happens, uh, it's going to reach the local saturation pressure and it's going to bubble. So you're going to get vapor, basically. Uh, the bubbles then, the issue is when they collapse. When they collapse, they release energy. And if that happens within the valve, you'll have a lot of damage within the valve. And um, some of the biggest valve manufacturers have to sell, sell like cages or uh, very expensive options to deal with cavitation. Our technology has a deal with the cavitation simply by pushing the cavitation out of the valve. Uh, the velocity goes through very quickly, uh, very laminar flow, keeps it more or less in the center of the pipe and, and keeps it from damaging the valve and also from, from damaging the pipe. So high velocity in the narrowest flow section of the valve, this is where going to happen and, and that's where it's going to we're going to push it out with the velocity here is a uh, so here's where the cavitation is located outside the valve valve body and for the most part inside the uh, the pipe and then uh, I think here it says how many diameters you have to have away um, so you just don't want to have a, uh, a bend in the in the piping because you don't want that cavitation to slam up against the pipe so there's the diameters at three to I think it says three to ten there three to five going further. So here's a here's a nice uh, video. Hopefully you guys can see this. I'm going to turn it on. So what you're seeing is this is our lab. Here is a GS valve. Here's a nice what uh, maybe eight inch um, pipe something like that and you're going to see the actual cavitation. So what you'll see is the cavitation coming through and you'll see how it is uh, way past the valve uh, and, and, and uh, interspersed throughout the um, throughout the pipe so it's not attacking the edge of the pipe as well and, and as a result you're going to get no damage to the valve and little if any to the interior walls and the piping. And here we go. Maybe you can hear it too. So here's where the bubbles are imploding, where it flashes. And as the velocity goes up, I'll turn it up so the velocity will go up, you'll see those move out even further towards the end here. So there it is. Now, the, now it's beyond where you can see it. Hmm. Implosion. Okay. So I hope you guys like that. And uh, so next, we're going to talk a little bit about angle seat valves. So these are smaller valves, only up to two, two, three inches, depending on some options that we have. This is the angle seat valve right here. Uh, these are very high cycle, very tough. 
So here's an example of one right here. I brought one with me too. I don't know if you want to yeah. shine the light on this. Sure. So I got a cutaway here. Show you the real thing. And uh, so here it is. Here's the one side that's not cut away. And you can see very smooth, nothing sticking out, you know, just the connection of your air here. This is a piston. Uh, this is the on-off version of the angle seat valve, so not the control valve, but the on-off. And, um, you know, there, there's nothing sticking out here, very smooth metal, and, and you could use, uh, you could have a wash down with this. You don't have to worry about parts uh, sticking out and, and being broken. Very, very durable, very, very tough. On the inside, pretty simple, too. Uh, you can see a, a nice, thick metal wall. Um, there are producers of these things where they use uh, sort of a, a polymer in here, a plastic, uh, and they might coat it with a thin coating of metal. Uh, you'll see those even crimp because of the difference of pressure when there's a, a like a steam application, whereas ours are tough, that's not going to happen. Um, so that's basically what it looks like on the inside. And couple of the, the things about this valve, first of all, you know, you see the springs right here, the piston. Um, I think what really gives us the high cycle is the fact uh, that we have a, a few co a combination of things. We have these six layers of chevron um, shaped uh, Teflon packing, spring loaded. And then uh, in addition, we have a burnished stem, so highly polished stem. So there's not any friction. Um, and, and there's a, a proprietary grease that we'll use as well. And uh, I think the combination of all of that is really what, uh, and just the quality of the manufacturing and the engineering allow these to last so long. But here's some of the other parts as well that you can see the head section. You can also turn uh, the head section so you could have that air intake, could be anywhere. Um, easy to take the actuator off. We uh, have a set toolkit where you can press the springs and then, uh, you know, because you don't want them to spring out at you. And, and then you can take out the circlip and take off the um, the actuator and, and change the springs. That doesn't happen to happen often because uh, we are keeping the uh, steam out. Uh, so, but you know, after millions and millions of uh, cycles, you might want to do that. So, uh, quarter inch to three inch. Most of the ones we see, a half, one and a half inch, one inch, two inch. Um, stainless steel or bronze, you can have. Wide range of end connections. So, this one is not wafer. Uh, you can do any type of weld connection. I think we have five different uh, weld connections plus NPT, plus flanged um, ret uh, spring return or double acting tights. Again, we're just talking about the on-off version right now. Temperature to 428 degrees Fahrenheit, pressure up to 580 PSI. And that really speaks to the quality of this valve because those are very high numbers for an angle seat valve. And I think some, some of the people out there, the competitors, talk about very high temperatures and pressures, but we've seen that they do not perform well in those situations. And then uh, up to 6 million uh, cycles. That's a Lot of cycles. Uh, we'll go into a factory and, and we'll know that we've sold them the valves and they can't find the valves because they're, they're covered in dust and dirt and they're in the back uh, between the machinery and they, have, they haven't been touched in years, 15 years or so, uh, because they, they, haven't, uh, they haven't broken down, they haven't had any issues with them. Uh, and then you do get a positive uh, shutoff, ANSI class 6, because of the elastim elastomeric like PTFE um, uh, seats that we have with these. It's a good alternative to an actuated ball valve. And we have pilot solenoids and switches that go with them and, and numerous other options. So here's a little bit just showing the different parts again. I'll, I'll leave it here for a second. Um, different, different connections. Um, talk about the seats. So here's your seat right here. Um, and here's the piston actuator again. And here's the springs. And we'll size it for the, you know, how many springs we need uh, based on what your conditions are and your pressure coming in. And then this is the same valve, but this is modulating control. So same high quality, same number of cycles, um, and it's compact, high quality uh, for standard control applications, stainless steel body, uh, the same elastom elastomeric, that's a hard one for me to say, PTFE, for example, plug seal, EPDM. Uh, we have others as well. Class six shutoff with those, quarter inch to three inch again. CVs that start at 0 0.17, very low. Uh, all the way up to, to 80, linear and equal percentage. And then all the different positioners that we have available with that, analog, pneumatic, or pneumatic, as well as digital. We have a four-wire, two-wire, explosion-proof, and uh, OSI interface. And then uh, the specs on this, again, same information for the most part, up to 580 PSI. 
Um, so we'll move on from that. So that's the high cycle. Yeah, real, real quick, Greg, uh, some of the applications that we've uh, we've introduced the angle seat valve in at Loy Instrument, um, these range from uh, air makeup units on the top of uh, industrial plants where you might have steam injection into a uh, humidifier section in the air house or even uh, chilled water valves that, uh, that are used in air house manufacturing uh, or air house applications. The, um, and then there's a wide range of other applications. Uh, typically when you get into applications where you have very, very high cycling, uh, the one that I'm uh, familiar with is, for example, the tire curing. Uh, in the tire industry, there is a process where they cure the tire and uh, they use steam to do that. And this application is a matter of cycling the valve, uh, what would you say, Greg, once every second, once every couple minutes? I every mean, couple it's minutes, yeah. Very, very high cycling exactly. applications. Absolutely. and All day long. Uh, all day long. And uh, when you get into those applications where you have very high cycling and, and particular steam applications, uh, the angle seat valve is one that um, you might want to talk to your customers about or look at your applications within the plant and, um, and identify those uh, areas. And then reach out to us at Loy Instrument, and we'd be glad to come over and take a look at those applications and help define what that valve looks like. So. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it is. These are, these are hard workers. I didn't mention the rangeability, so they don't have quite the accuracy that the um, sliding gate does, but they still have 40 to 1 accuracy, which is excellent rangeability. Yep. Uh, 40 GPM, uh, you're, you're getting it down to 1 GPM from 40, 80 to 2, right? Mm -hmm. So um, so very good rangeability, not quite as good as the control uh, rangeability of the GS, and the GS is a bigger valve too. That's the difference really. So the ball sector valve is our trouble uh, solver or our problem solver. And when I say problem, I'm talking about extreme medias where you might have a sludge, a slurry, um, you might have particles in it, uh, even fibers or even metal fibers. Um, and we'll see, this is very durable in terms of that kind of thing. So here's the assembly in general, very similar to the sliding gate valve, which you just, all you need is a few screws to take off the faceplate, also wafer. Uh, and remember, the wafer can be used with ANSI, ANSI 150, 300, 600. Um, there's a lug pattern, which you might be able to see right here, there's little holes, so we adjust those. and. And for ours, the, all of the, the pressure rating is with the valve itself, and all we need to do is give you a different uh, a plate, a face plate, to give it a different ANSI uh, rating with a different lug pattern. So you don't have to uh, buy a whole new valve. Uh, if you need a new ANSI rating, it would just be the face plate for that valve. Um, so the cost, I guess, is what I'm saying. The cost is uh, not very significant going from a 150 to 300 to 600. Uh, as far as the bulk uh, sector feature, 1 inch to 12 inch, again, uh, temperatures and pressure ratings up to 580, class 6 shutoff, so this is going to give you, uh, you could use this for on-off as well as modulating control. This is going to be strictly equal percentage characteristics, which if you're uh, acquainted with that, that means you get really high control at the low end. That's why we're getting 300 to 1 on this. Um, here's the different seat rings that we can use, PTFE, higher temperature would be peak stellite uh, depending on how abrasive it is in terms of uh, abrasive medium we've used things like uh, dry cement so that's very abrasive uh, we've used um, uh, we've worked with uh, things like cement as well um, tiles roof tiles that are basically like cement and this thing works well with all of those and then uh, the different o-rings that we have with different materials so here's what it comes down to it's it's not a full ball it's um, half of a ball so that's why it's called a ball sector. And as a result, it's self-cleaning. So in a case of cement or something like cement going through, or if it gets stuck, the whole valve can get stuck. That's not going to happen as much with our valves as it would with other valves. Uh, circular opening in the spherical shell, I'll, I'll show that in a moment. 90 degree rotary. So this is rotary, not linear up and down, but rotary. The other two valves that we showed you, the angle seat and the GS valve, the sliding gate, are linear. So and our positioner is also linear, so it's up above doesn't stick out the uh, side with arms that can get readjusted or uh, misadjusted or bumped or, or changed. It's just a potentiometer, our positioner on the top, that measures where the, the stroke is and then lets you adjust it and so forth and tells you uh, uh, where it is and how to adjust it. Um, um, so that's a, a great advantage to have that linear on the top. This, on the other hand, is more of a, a, a rotary, so it's different that way. But the still, we still have the... Uh, uh, we still have the uh, 
the position uh, positioner on the top rather than on the side. Um, equal percentage characteristics, central bearing. So the reason the central bearing is important is because it's not a cam where you have it, uh, where you have the the ball um, not touching or not contacting the seat and coming into the seat. That would be more like a cam. Ours is always in contact with the seat. The advantage is it's not lifting off, so no intrusion, intrusions of particles can get between that ball and the seat. Uh, if it's crushed in the seat, it's gonna it's gonna ruin the seat much more quickly. Ours doesn't do that; it wipes it away. So residue and deposits are basically wiped off as it goes across the seat. Here would be your seat; it's a ring. Uh, disadvantage is that it's gonna take a little more actuation force compared to other road uh, road uh, valves. But we think that makes it um, um, it's worth it because of it being able to work with with such nasty media. Uh, here's showing our particular ball sector valve with others sort of a sickle shape here. Things tend to get stuck more uh, in this kind, whereas with ours, the opening uh, tends to uh, preclude more of the stuff getting stuck in there. And uh, you can see here, this is where it would close for the normal ball valve, and you've got a very small margin that can wear away. With ours, if it closes, it turns this way, it closes this way, and we've marked where it would be. You have a much, much larger margin, so nasty and media can wear away that ball, and this will still seal, where this very quickly will start to leak. Uh, seat ring cover, the valve open, so it's fully open or fully closed. It's covering the, um, the, the seat ring, and then as it goes through its motion, it's wiping it clean. And some other valves that we sell. So here's a pressure regulator, which is basically a sliding gate, but with a mechanical uh, feedback, uh, either upstream, which would be a uh, back pressure, or downstream, which would be a reducing uh, pressure regulator. Here's the uh, a stepper motor, an electric version of the sliding gate. Uh, here's again the angle seat. Here's something we call the segmented valve, which we go up to 32 inches. It's basically a rotary style sliding gate, very, very similar in the way it works, uh, but again, up to 32 inches and nasty media. Um, and then here's the ball sector, which is actually showing the operation. And finally, we have a, a pinch valve here I'm showing at the end which can be used for some sanitary applications and it's used in the meat, um, meat factories especially. We sell a positioner, three different kinds. So we have a four wire version, which is better. You're providing your own 24 volt uh, DC uh, power source. Uh, but we also sell a loop powered if that's what you want as well. Um, and, uh, and also this has a bigger openings too for air, which is uh, an advantage. You don't have to have as clean air with the four wire version. Uh, and it's escaping me right now, but one's piezo and the other's a, a different version. So basically it has, uh, it deals with, with dirty air better, the four wire version. And then there's the explosion, per, uh, explosion proof version as well that we, we have. Some applications. I'm going to go here very quick because we're running out of time. Um, I know we're at 45 minutes. I appreciate your patience. So I'll, I'll go through these quickly. If you have any further questions, we can certainly answer those questions or send you those. Um, steam, chilled water, refrigerants compressed air, gases, chemicals. Um, here it is with metallurgy, a blast furnace. So this is at a steel plant here in the United States, gas reducing and flow control skids. And you can see a, a GS valve and a ball sector valve both being used. So you can always recognize our valve here at the diaphragm. Here you can see the, the wafer. Here you can see a couple as well. Um, we have manifolds that we uh, sell for continuous casting in this case. This is an OEM machinery. Uh, so it's metal production. Uh, in, in particular, this OEM machinery, there's cooling water and control. Uh, at, at, and I'm sorry, there's cooling water, and these contain both control modulating as well as on and off valves. So there's two different being used. Uh, we, we produce uh, manifolds like this for kegs as well, um, for cleaning them and, and rinsing them and, and, and then filling them. Uh, here's a GS and angle seat valves being used for burner. This is a burner installation controlling air and oxygen. So I mentioned Praxair before and Lindy. Uh, we're certified with those guys. We do a lot of business. And with Praxair, for example, we're only uh, one of two or three valve manufacturers who are certified for oxygen, uh, for pure oxygen. Uh, Oxyfuel control. So here's a, a glass melting. Set our valves. Uh, this is a Honeywell project. Uh, this is a sliding gate for natural gas. Here's a sliding gate and uh, for combustion. So here's our valves. Here's a couple Maxon valves. It looks like they're double, um, double block shut off. So here's our modulating control. 
with the sliding gate, and here's some on-off valves. Yeah, so this is a this is a pretty typical gas train where you have the double block or double block and bleed uh, max on safety shutoff valves for your gas line, and then you have your modulating control. Um, in in the past, uh, a lot of customers had used like butterfly valves with uh, either modulatrol motors or another type of electric actuator in those applications, but what ends up happening is on butterfly valves, you really only get the range uh, control range of a probably 75%, uh, if that, on a on a uh, on a butterfly valve. Whereas on the sliding gate valve, which uh, which Greg is showing here, the rangeability of control is really over 100% of that valve travel. So if you have very uh, tight control needs on your gas train or your your burner that you're burning into the process. Um, for heating or uh, other applications, you might want to consider a sliding gate, which is going to give you a, a, a very high turndown and, and nice control, um, expect, especially on oxygen uh, gas trains where you're firing into like a glass furnace or in the steel mills, uh, things of that nature, where the burners require high turndown, but also, also uh, an oxy fuel type, type setup. So thanks, yeah. Greg. Yeah, thank you, Jeff. I know I've been to some of the aluminum casting locations and stuff where they're doing some some burrs and stuff like that with natural gas too. Um, so here's another GS. So this is also boilers, boiler feed water in this case though. Uh, and this is an electric uh, sliding gate valve. Um, we have uh, a lot of our valves on the Hearst boilers. This one's in a medical center in Texas, as well as uh, this is a textile plant, in Dominican Republic. This is the medical center in Texas. Here's our valve. Here's our valve. I took a lot of these pictures off of our um, our slides for uh, electric motorized uh, valves. So you see a lot of motorized valves, but you know we also see a, a, a large number of pneumatic valves too. These just happen to be electric again because I took it off of that those slides. Um, so other other places we you'll see us being used with boilers or other steam lines, um, main steam lines and, and offshoots and condensate. Uh, here's with water treatment. So this happens to be polymer injection for water treatment. It's an OEM down here. Um, this is in uh, Midlothian, Texas. And then this is an RO plant in Colorado Springs, Colorado. See our valves and you can see their filters there. Here's our valve. Um, chillers. So this was an interesting application. It was a Manhattan high-rise office building. It was a six inch control valve. And in this case, uh, we did a really good job replacing the competition right here. Here's the on-off valve, here's the control valve, we replaced that. This is seeing it from another angle, I believe. So this valve, oops, let me go back. So this valve is this one, they've just, or this one right here, it's just the other side of it. And there's our valve installed now. Um, so the lead time for the valve, this valve here was going to be uh, eight weeks and we were able to get them one overnight. Um, so uh, I think that that's not an exaggeration to say we get our stuff up very, very quickly. Yeah, and you can see the option on that, uh, on the Schubert Salzer valve, uh, where you can have the hand wheel. Oh, there um, it is, yeah. Where um, on this particular one, it's the uh, chain-driven hand wheel, so uh, the operator or maintenance person from down on the floor can actually adjust that valve manually pretty easily from the floor if needed. Whereas typically on the Bettis, um, there's a hand wheel that's right on the valve itself or right on the actuator itself. Uh, so this shows, shows the different options that you can have on the Schubert and Salzer electric actuator in order for there to be manual actuation as well. Very good. Thank you, Jeff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, interesting. Catch that. Um, so when I say building maintenance here, I'm talking about utilities. Uh, here's the GS valve. Uh, we use it a lot on HVAC. So actually, this is not a picture. I didn't have a picture with the valve on it, but we have used them in several places with utilities. So heating or cooling, chilled water, steam, uh, glycol, especially if you're talking about low flow and high pressure, a lot of the cheaper HVAC valves cannot handle the high pressure, whereas ours, uh, a one inch, for example, uh, would, would handle easily 275 to 300 PSI. And again, you can use the LS Demeric plugs like the PTFB or the you're doing pretty good uh, with that EPBM. <laughs> I don't know. I practice it. I actually practice it a little better, but uh, I, I, I don't it's know. early in the week. Too, Execution so here, we're having problems, yeah. uh, and we'll give us this still the, sh the tight shut off. Uh, so a lot of advantages for using this for HVAC applications. And um, I'm not going to really show you. I was going to pull apart these these plugs 
I would like, if we can, do um, you think there's any way, Jeff, maybe we don't have time for it, but they ha I had that one, I did want to show the one um, video at least, and it shows the sliding gate valve, um, right, maybe we can copy the, there it is, this right here, yeah, oh, there's no way to do that. Yeah. It's a short video, um, no talking, but it does show you uh, a really nice view of, of how this thing comes apart, the positioner, um, all of it. Oops. Let's see here. It's uh, oh, actually where it is. It's uh, up, up, yeah, up right there. Right there. Yeah, the picture. I was messing with this quite a bit. So if not, I can send it out to everybody in the follow-up email. Okay. Oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah, give us a second here while they load up this video. So we have a YouTube uh, page too, and, and this is uh, one of the places you can see that. with that uh we're wrapping up here today um we really appreciate your time at this point does uh do you guys have any questions that we uh could share with greg and uh and help answer any uh any questions you might have if you do uh just unmute your phone and uh go ahead and ask Okay, we'll go ahead and uh, wrap up today then. Uh, once again, we really appreciate your time. Uh, thanks, Greg, for coming in today and okay. uh, shedding some light on the uh, valves and different applications. Um, if you do have any further uh, uh, questions uh, or uh, need some assistance in uh, helping put together a valve for your application, uh, we do have a real simple questionnaire that we can go through with you and help fill in the blanks and uh, size up a valve for you. And um, and also provide uh, services for installation, calibration, and uh, things of that nature with the valves as well. 
So keep that in mind. Um, but with that, we'll conclude today. And uh, I will be recording the session, uh, sending it to our YouTube page so you can uh, view it at a later time if needed. And uh, we will see you next uh, Tech Tuesday. Thanks for your time. Bye.